Hello everyone and welcome back. So today I'm doing another travel video and I'm going to show you my journey to the Canary Islands. I'm going to be traveling down to Fuerteventura. I'm taking a lunchtime flight. As always, I'm going to take you with me going through the airport onto the plane, getting my car hire on the other side and eventually onto my hotel in Fuerteventura. It's a nice day for it. It should be good. Let's go. So instead of driving today, I decided to travel down by train from Norwich, which took around about an hour and 50 minutes. A nice journey through the countryside down here to Stansted. Let's head into departures. My flight leaves at about half past one. So I've got a bit of time to look around the shops. Most importantly, grab a coffee. People always huddle around the departure boards my flight out there yet so what's good about today's flight is that i booked it priority and i booked it in advance so actually it works out quite cheap which means i can take my own bag on the plane with me and i don't have to wait in that queue so obviously if you're taking a slightly bigger bag you'll need to be in that queue or if you've not chosen to do priority but i thought for the price might as well which means i can go straight through to departures good to see that bag drop is quiet this is normally busy as, I don't know why, everyone always goes over to that departures there and it's always really busy, but there's a departure gate here to get through security and it never seems as busy. That's what I always find. I always find fast track there, a waste of money. So obviously the downfall of taking your bag on the cabin is that you've got to make sure all your liquids fit into these bags. Oh, the world of duty free. So I can see it there, Ryanair, 135, telling me to relax. It's weird, Stansted is all under one roof, but it always feels like it's under different buildings when you go through departures. So security was quite quick considering all the gear I've got, and my laptop and my camera, any free tasters going worth having a look. I buy stuff coming back but I can't say I buy much going. I love this floor though don't you? How it all shines and glitters. The way the duty-free shops curve around and then curve again it kind of gives this feeling of it's really big in here when in actual fact obviously if you look up you can still see the original ceiling you're not really going far. 4 99 for a bag of Smarties. Once upon a time, the only place you could find Toblerone was an airport. That's what I used to find anyway. I haven't had it since I was a kid. You never really see anyone like, at work with it or in an office. Do you want to bite my Toblerone? In fact, they do Toblerone minis now. That's quite good. How much is a bar of Toblerone nowadays? £6.50 for a gold one. Wow, that looks good. Wow, there's a Lego section. Why would you buy that before you go on the aircraft? So I'm in the main departure lounge now. Do you know the amount of these that I've actually lost? How much are they costing here? £6.49 for a European adapter. Wow, they still sell these. £15.99 for a disposable camera. There's so many more shops than I even remember when I was last here, which was only like a couple of months ago. Makes me laugh why they always have designer shops when you go into an airport. Like we can afford it after the money we've spent to go on holiday. Let's go grab a coffee and see if we can have a look at the runway whilst we do it. Can we go up there? Oh, we can actually. It's quite nice up here. Quite handy, I can sit down here, do a little bit of work and grab a coffee. In fact, I need to grab it. In the old days, you'd never get the departure boards in the restaurants, you see, but it's quite nice that you can get them now so you can enjoy your coffee and not have to worry about what the situation with your flight is. I just got told that's a cappuccino. Can I eat cappuccino? No matter how many times I've flown, I always love to sit and watch the aircraft take off. I've just discovered this place, actually. This is a great spot. Wow, I've never seen the airport from this angle before. 
You see what I mean about how you're all under the same building, but as you go through security, duty free, and then on to departures, it all feels like you're in a different building. This flight is now closing at departure gate one. See, because I come here in the mornings, I don't normally see this open, but this champagne bar. Look at all those champagne bottles. If I was traveling with Gabby, I'd definitely be in there. Oh, is it just breaking? How much? And thank you for shopping with us. So the app is actually quite handy, even though it's not on the departure board yet, telling me what gate to go to. So unfortunately not travelling on the train. Last few times I've left from this gate. Do you know, it's amazing. As yet, no one has asked to see my passport. So I've managed to get through to the departure lounge and actually to the gate without anyone checking my passport. I know that actually doesn't always happen. All the glum faces of people returning from their holidays. Wouldn't it be amazing if the whole airport had these literally everywhere? Escalator is out of action. So it's the stairs we go. I hope my app is right and uh, I have got the right gate. Can you walk back to the terminal building once you've gone to the wrong gate? I didn't realize there's actually cafes now at the gates. I always thought that's a good idea. Not many places do that, do they? Wow, I didn't even know these gates existed. Here I am. So how many of you have hired a car before and actually had a personal phone call from the car hire company? I had one about 10 minutes ago. This was a cheap car hire. I feel like I've got very personal service. They're wanting to know when I arrive and what my flight number is. Never had that from a car company before. So when boarding commences, everyone rushes to the gate. Bearing in mind now, you actually get an assigned seat on mine and you can't just pick it like you used to. And I have made sure that I've got a window seat because I like looking out the window. And it's a better view for you. Let's go. All right, last one on the plane. As always. Yeah. Hey, uh, Perfect. Thank you very much. So I'm on the back of the aircraft. I don't know why I have this weird thing where I need to be on the back. Check what seat number 32F. <laughs> it's a very busy flight. So the flight's around about 4 hours 15 minutes. And compared to the 737 Max, I think it is, which I've flown quite a lot with Ryanair, this one's a lot smaller. The, the seats are a lot tighter as well. No way to store anything, I guess, on the table, but it's pretty tight. Am I supposed to put this? Put this on the floor. Got about five minute taxi out here to North East runway in Stansted. We'll be climbing up to 35,000 feet. Good news is weather on route in general, a little bit cloudy. Expecting it to be smooth though at the Moroccan coastline. Down to the Canaries, we expect it to be very pleasant indeed. The trencher at the moment, temperature 28 degrees, completely clear skies, and just a bit of a light breeze from the northeast. Expected to be a very nice afternoon down there. To sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. We'll give you a flight update later. Thank you very much. Might be able to see sandbanks just over there. You could probably make out Bournemouth Pier too. So I thought I'd do the Ryanair meal deal for £10. I get a cappuccino, the famous ham and cheese croissant, and a Mars bar. I can have that with a Pringle if I want to. It's actually not bad, I quite enjoy this.
Well, it's nice and warm. Well, that's one good thing about traveling light and also having your bags in a cabin that I don't have to wait for baggage reclaim. All I've got to do, go through passport control and then try and find my car hire. And then on to the apartments that I booked. I think they're in a pretty quiet area on the north part of the island. Just like my phone has got enough battery for Google Maps. Well, these are all the rent-a-car and this is the problem you see when you book through a third party trying to find out where your car hire is vip cars ace rent-a-car can i see any of those on here no so better call the number that contacted me see where they tell me to go wow well, we've got no air con in here probably not hello timothy hello hello sir how are you yeah i'm fine thanks it's all right yeah, 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 I've just arrived. Where, where do I go? You need to go to the public parking. B de Barcelona, 420, 420. We are in the parking B420, okay? So, so I just... See the Spanish, we see the Spanish flag. You front to the Spanish flag, you keep going straight, you will follow me. I go out, look for the Spanish flag. and no... Okay, sir. Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay, all right, thanks. You good, sir. Well, those instructions were um, difficult. I guess I'll just go outside and see what happens. See, normally when you get car hire, you can come to one of these car hire places. Wow, look at the ceiling, yikes. I'd hate to be getting a car over there. Have you seen that queue for the car hire for Avis? Still not quite sure where I'm going or what I'm doing heading out into where it says parking I guess someone arriving with their water skis are you on the car park next to that no, yes we are in the public parking this is the private parking okay three flat the Spanish flag the Europe flag I think I've got it I think I've got it I can see the flags he's on about you see I know what my wife would be saying right now she'd be like you haven't booked with a proper car company. Have you booked with some kind of cowboy? Where on earth are you sending us? That's the problem you see. When you book online and you just like Google cheap rent a car and you come up with one of these uh, comparison sites, you find the cheapest, right? And then I guess you look afterwards to see what company it's with. I think there's the Spanish flag that he was talking about. Right, I gotcha. I'm sure he said B420. Hello, Timothy, Hello nice to you? meet you. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Are oh, you doing it out the back of a car? I'm sorry, this is the protocol. Okay, I will need from you your driver license yeah. and your passport or your ID. Okay, you yeah. Well, I tell you what, that's a new one on me. I've never actually picked up a car from the back of a hire car before. And the instructions to take the car back are even stranger that I park up in one of these bays. I take a photo of the bay and put the keys and the car park ticket under the seat. All sounds very um, different and definitely the insurance was all different. I didn't have to pay any extra insurance, nor did he want to sell me any extra insurance. It's the first time. God, I need to take this off. This is way too what? Start this bad boy up. How do you get it in reverse? Like that. It's always so nerve wracking when you drive a car for the first time, a new car. Oh. So that's the easy thing done, right? I guess now I've just got to try and find the apartments where I'm staying. This is over got enough phone battery on Google Maps. Well, the landscape of Fios Ventura reminds me of being on Mars. You'll see more of this on the tour of the island. So I've just had that warning light come on. Doesn't that mean it's a flat tire? Well, they look all right. Interesting 
and then what I should do really. So it's not it's not it's not something I should worry about then. No 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 no. It's the pressure of the tires, but the pressure of the tire is good. The problem is, is the, the the sensor is very sensitive. It's just a sensor then. Don't worry, Jim. If you need something else, you just tell me, okay? Okay, alright, thank you. Cheers. Thank you, bye bye. Well, in the UK, if that had happened, I'd be taking it to a garage, but apparently the sensor is just being sensitive. I'll have to keep an eye on it. Well, I've arrived and I, according to my sat nav, believe it's just in front of me. Or on the side, just here. That's it there. Well, I think I've arrived in the right place, just at sunset, actually. So you don't want to scratch the sides, do you? Put it in gear. Well, the sea is right there. It looks like there's a couple of restaurants up there. I believe this has a pool at the top. Looks a little bit old, actually. Looks a little bit closed. Emergency and late arrival. Yeah, I can see yeah, the black okay. boxes, yeah? Good. Number four. Number four. For you, on okay. the top, the okay. fourth one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the code is... Four. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Thank it you very much. Okay, you have the apartment number five, okay? Okay. If you, if you take the elevator on the first floor, Number five. Tomorrow from 11, uh, I will be on the reception. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What floor did she say? I can't remember what floor she said. I think it's two. What's this? Oh wow, this is the uh, the swimming pool. I did see photos of this. This will probably be nice tomorrow. Maybe to have a dip. Oh, that's warm. But this is why I chose this hotel because it does have an impressive view. I'm on the uh, the west part of the island. Look how black the beach is down there. What a view though. There's number four over there. Where would number five be? Number five is here. Look at that, no ceiling. Just the sky. I see a lot of those in Egypt, not really in the Canaries. Oh, I feel the heat. Wow, really warm in here. Huge. Send the curtains to get a better view. It's almost like I've got a corner room, but I don't have a balcony. How many curtains have I got? Some fresh air in. Well, that's my view. And this is the apartment that I booked. I'll tell you how much it is in a bit. These lamps all work. Well, that lamp don't work. So it's got a TV. See, we've got its own Wi-Fi. Why can I hear water? I can hear water. That's weird. Opens up double drawers. Nice little sofa to sit on. I like the lamp. So I've got a hell of a lot of window space and round here is the kitchen I'll take it this for the hot water look at this look at the size of this fridge this is bigger than the fridge i've got at home i was nervous but i'm very impressed it's got a microwave full cutlery drawers pots and pans even cleaning products I feel a bit weird just sleeping in this big open space. I'm weird like that, but very impressed. 
Let's check out the bathroom. Maybe they're not all this big, because obviously that's a bit of a giveaway. A handy hair dryer. Yeah, this is an accessible room. And a shower. That's probably why it's so huge. Let's do the bed test. Nice and firm. I'm really impressed with the studio apartment that I've got. This has cost me 47 pound a night. I'm here for three nights. And it basically says uh, that their apartment group offers a concept of independent service that will give you the freedom and tranquility of a private intimate holiday. So they also can provide recommendations and excursions and all that kind of stuff. It's handy they've got their own Wi-Fi, but actually my phone signal is pretty good here so I can use data as I would do roaming back home. The car high was very odd. It cost me 55 pounds for three days. Like I say, I've never got signed in or to do car hire. A, that quickly, or B, in the back of the car. So I'm off to get some food. If you want to see my tour of Fiorta Ventura, just click the video there. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. Click that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. I'll see you next time.